Hi, and welcome to True Crime, a channel dedicated to the dark underworld of criminal activity carried out by gangsters, mobsters, cartel leaders, and others. In this video, we will explore the twisted world of the Hells Angels and their hitman Eve Trudeau, examining the crimes they committed and the consequences that ultimately caught up with them. Let's get started. Background once upon a time, there was a period of history known to the Quebecois as the Grand Morsure, a time of ultra-conservative Catholic rule from 1936 to 1960. But everything changed with the 1960 provincial elections, which saw the Union Nationale defeated by the Quebec Liberals and the beginning of the Quiet Revolution. In just a decade, Quebec transformed from one of the most conservative societies in North America to one of the most liberal, with a culture of hedonism emerging as a backlash against the medieval Catholic social mores of the Grand Marseur. And as part of that rebellion against the suffocating conformism of the past, outlaw motorcycle clubs exploded in popularity. For many young French-Canadian men, the outlaw biker culture represented freedom, rebellion, and machismo. By 1968, there were an astonishing 350 outlaw biker clubs in La Belle province. But with so many clubs vying for their share of organized crime rackets, the resulting violence and viciousness had no parallel in the rest of Canada, earning Quebec the reputation as the red zone in the outlaw biker world. The Popeye Moto Club, led by Yves Budo, stood out even among the violent outlaw biker clubs of Quebec. They were infamous for their gratuitous and sadistic violence, attracting the attention of the Hells Angels. The Popeyes were often employed by the Montreal Mafia to perform their dirty work, and it was only a matter of time before they caught the eye of the Hells Angels. And so it was that the Popeye Moto Club became Canada's first Hells Angels chapter, cementing its place in history as one of the most notorious outlaw biker clubs of all time. Hells Angels the 1960s and 1970s were a time of rebellion and chaos in Quebec. The Quiet Revolution brought about sweeping changes in society, but for some young men, the outlaw biker culture symbolized freedom, rebellion, and machismo. Trudeau was one such young man. He joined the Popeye Moto Club in 1968 and became their ace assassin during the biker war that erupted in 1974. The Popeyes had targeted the Devil's Disciples, who were allies of the Montreal chapter of the Satan's Choice Motorcycle Club. The violence escalated, resulting in casualties on both sides. Trudeau's expertise in handling explosives and building bombs earned him a reputation as a professional and meticulous hitman. He even scalped one of his victims, earning the nickname Apache. In December 1977, the Popeyes patched over to become the Hells Angels in Quebec, and Trudeau was one of the founding members. The tension between the Hells Angels and their rivals, the Outlaws, boiled over in February 1978. Trudeau was the driver and shooter who killed one outlaw and wounded another outside a popular Hells Angels bar, sparking a biker war that would last for years. The incident was a reminder that the outlaw biker subculture of Quebec was not just about freedom, and rebellion, but also about violence and lawlessness. For some, it was a way of life, but for others, it was a nightmare. In September 1979, the Hells Angels Montreal chapter faced a dilemma. Their clubhouse was overcrowded and their numbers were increasing. The national president, Yves Le Boss Budeau, made the bold decision to split the chapter into two, a north chapter led by Laurent Alangle Vayu and a south chapter led by Regine Zig Zig Lessard. Budo assigned the notorious killer, Morris Mom, Boucher, to the North Chapter, which would soon earn a reputation for their violent behavior and excessive drug use. Standing at just 5'6 and weighing 135 pounds, Boucher didn't fit the stereotype of a typical biker. But his size belied his deadly prowess. He was the Hells Angels' most prolific killer, responsible for the deaths of 43 people between 1970 and 1985. Boucher's services were in high demand during the biker war between the Hells Angels and the Outlaws for control of Montreal's drug trade. He killed 18 of the 23 Outlaws who died during the conflict. Despite his size, Boucher was a killing machine, according to journalist Jerry Langton. He was the first Canadian Hells Angel to earn the coveted Filthy Few patch, reserved for members who have killed for the club. Boucher's lack of conscience and respect for human life made him a feared and respected member of the club. He heavily relied on cocaine to assist with his killings, a common trait among hitmen. 
Boucher's story is a captivating and terrifying one. It's a tale of loyalty, violence, and the lengths people will go to protect their interests. The Hell's Angels may have been a fearsome group, but they were no match for the ruthlessness of Morris Mom Boucher. Lennoxville Massacre In the criminal underworld of Montreal, money and drugs were the lifeblood of the West End Gang, the Hell's Angels, and every other group looking to make a fortune. And in this world, Morris Mom, Boucher and his protege, Eva Patchy Trudeau, were some of the deadliest enforcers around. Standing at only 5'6 and weighing 135 pounds, Trudeau didn't look like the typical biker, but his reputation as the Hells Angel's most prolific killer spoke for itself. Trudeau's deadly talents weren't just for the Angels, though. The Irish-Canadian West End gang frequently called on him to take out their rivals. But it was Trudeau's greed that eventually led to his downfall. When Alan the Weasel, Ross offered him $200,000 to eliminate Frank Juni, Ryan's killers, Trudeau didn't hesitate. He killed two men and collected $25,000, but when he tried to collect the rest of the money, Ross directed him to the Hells Angels in Halifax and Sorrel Tracy. Trudeau ended up stealing $98,000 from the Halifax chapter, which caused a rift within the Hells Angels and led to the Lennoxville Massacre. Trudeau's wild and uncontrollable behavior was a source of tension within the Hells Angels and the North Chapter's drug use, and cheating only added to their resentment. The decision was made to eliminate the North Chapter, and on March 24, 1985, five members were shot and dumped in the St. Lawrence River. Trudeau was supposed to be at that meeting, but was enrolled in a detox program. After learning of the massacre, he received a visit from a Montreal Chapter representative who told him he was out of the club. Crown Witness Trudeau's life was a roller coaster ride of violence, money, and betrayal. After his release from detox, he thought he could resume his life with his motorcycle and $46,000, but the Hells Angels had other plans. They demanded two lives in exchange for his bike and cash. Trudeau was desperate, and he agreed to their terms, successfully taking one of their targets down. But his victory was short-lived as the Hells Angels put a $50,000 bounty on his head, leaving him with no choice but to turn informant. In court, he pleaded guilty to 43 counts of manslaughter, shedding light on a gruesome list of victims that included motorcycle gang members, sympathizers, and innocent bystanders. The trial was not without controversy, with some questioning the government's plea bargain deal that allowed Trudeau to walk free in seven years. Regardless, Trudeau was sentenced to life in prison and given a controversial contract that included $40,000 in cash and a weekly allowance of $35 for cigarettes. Victims of Hell's Angels Hitman Eve Trudeau was a notorious criminal known for being a merciless killer. One of his earliest victims was Jean-Marie Veal, whom he shot to death in Trois-Rivières. His reign of terror continued as he went on to eliminate several other individuals, including Robert Cote, Jills Cataret, and Brian Powers. Trudeau was so ruthless that he even killed individuals who were not directly involved in organized crime. William Wycold was one such victim who bore an uncanny resemblance to an outlaw leader named Roland Roxy Dudimple, whom Trudeau wanted to kill. The unsuspecting Wycold was shot dead when he failed to answer Trudeau's question. Trudeau's only disappointment was that the Hells Angels did not pay him for the killing, as he believed that anyone who resembled Dudenville should be killed. Trudeau's killing spree continued as he went on to assassinate Roland Roxy Dudenville, Robert Label, Donald McLean, and Cameron Pitch. In February 1980, Trudeau beat to death Jean Desjardins, a grandmother who was trying to help her son, ex-Hells Angel Andre Desjardins. He also killed her son and his girlfriend, and dumped their bodies in the St. Lawrence River. Trudeau continued his killing spree by eliminating Robert Morin, Donat Lemia, Lucy Valliers, Patrick Huey McGurnagan, Charlie Hashes, and Denny's Lecure Kennedy. Even his partners, Andre Forget and Ronald Bernard, were not spared, and Trudeau shot them at a gas station and outside his sister's house in Laval, respectively. His killing spree culminated in July 1983 with the murder of Miss Helda Sormiers, brother-in-law of reputed mob boss Frank Catroni. Trudeau's ability to kill without remorse was truly horrifying, and it is a miracle that he was finally apprehended and brought to justice. The End From a life of crime to a life of anonymity, Trudeau's transformation seemed complete when he was granted parole and a new identity.
He was Denny's Kane now, living in Valafield with a new partner and a new job. But the demons of his past were never far behind, and when he lost his job, he spiraled back into addiction and committed a heinous crime that shocked the nation. Even the judge couldn't hide his revulsion, comparing Trudeau's body count to the Canadian military's in the Gulf War. Back in prison, Trudeau found himself doubly ostracized for being both an informant and a child molester. But fate had one final twist in store for the man who had once been the angel of death. The cancer had invaded his body and the National Parole Board granted him a reprieve. Some saw it as justice, while others felt he was getting off too easily. For Trudeau, it was simply the end of the line, a final reckoning for a life lived in the shadows. Thank you for watching another amazing video from our true crime team. Like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned to our next real life true crime video.